I regret nothing. Daytona, one of the best racing games ever made and my all-time favorite. When I found this game in the arcade, I fell in love, but I struggled to find a good way to play it at home. There's the PS3 and Xbox 360 port, sure, but those are consoles. And I don't trust consoles. Sega easily could have released this game on PC, they already ported it. Sega Racing Classic was a re-release of Daytona USA without the license, but the arcade machine was just a Windows PC. But I guess it was just too hard to sit back and print money. One day, my friend did Sega's job and told me about the existence of Daytona USA 3, also called Daytona Championship USA. Then, not doing Sega's job, he told me that Sega themselves leaked the full game online a while back. And two days of googling, downloading, hex editing, and forum account making later, I finally had it running on my Windows installation. I was happy I finally had a way to play Daytona at home without relying on my old, probably near-death PS3. I wished I could play the original more, but I'd settle for almost anything. Just anything except a Saturn port. But then, I decided to try something. Now, this is your name with the other champion. This took a while. Single player. Yes. Please select the race course. Dinosaur Canyon. Please choose manual or automatic transmission. Manual. Ladies and gentlemen, start your engines. Yes. I tried everything. Wine and Proton, DXVK and Wine D3D, and after days of work I finally got somewhere. Daytona 3 was running on Linux, but it would crash a lot. And it would hard crash too, lock up my system. But just once, I managed to get it stable enough to finish one race. I had a lot of fun playing this, but in my mind I knew I really was just settling for an imitation of the original. Plus, I could never solve the crashes anyway. I'd get lucky to get through an entire race. It was time to put Daytona 3 down and move on. Oh boy, it's time for RPCS 3. <laughs> Yeah! 
exactly blistering fast, is it? I gotta admit, I was hoping that following my friend's instructions that this game would just work perfectly on our PCS3, but no, it's kinda screwed. Look, we need to talk about this emulator for a second. My friend told me you could run the PS3 version of Daytona USA at 60fps in this emulator. He had an Intel processor and was running Windows. I have an AMD processor and I'm running Linux. I wasn't optimistic. Look, I love RPCS3, but this emulator is probably the biggest pain in my ass I've ever encountered. It's slower on Linux, slower on AMD, last time I used it, it destroyed Pulse Audio so fucking hard I had to reinstall my entire operating system. Quite frankly, it's a disaster! But it is alpha software, so I can't really complain. I guess. Sorry, just needed to get that out there. Anyway, your options for running this are either to use the SPU interpreter setting, which is slow, but it's accurate, or use the LLVM SPU setting, which is really fast, but doesn't play well with Daytona. Uh, what's happening here? As long as you don't have epilepsy, I mean, I guess the game is kind of playable like this, but it's not... it's not really that enjoyable, is it? No matter how hard I tried here, I just couldn't get this to a place where I felt satisfied, so... Without further ado, let's move on yet again. Sega Model 2 emulator. A closed source, Windows only piece of software. It does its job well, but it's not in active development anymore. Legend has it, the developer was hired by Sega to make the Daytona USA console ports in 2013, but I'm not sure I believe that. Regardless, this was my Hail Mary. My last chance. So, I found the emulator. Downloaded it, sourced the Daytona USA ROM set, clicked load, and... Yeah, that's pretty much exactly what I expected. So, over the next few days, I tried everything I could think of. I even checked YNHQ. Wow, they've got a Daytona screenshot? That's a tease. Wine 3.0! I'm sure they've maintained compatibility. Let's see... Requires D3DX 943. Yeah, that's a lie. Everything works. Wow, cool. Look at this guy! Works almost perfectly? Yeah, I'll believe you, Mr. Windows XP. Man, this stuff is really legacy. Let me see if I can find something newer. Requires DirectX 9 through Wine Tricks. Oh. Well, thank you, Daniel. Oh, and he's the maintainer, too, so he must know what he's talking about. Yeah, if only it were that easy, Daniel. I spent, like, three days trying to get DirectX 9 to install through Wine Tricks. Every time it would just error out. I mean, I tried everything, over and over, to no avail. I even tried MAME. Turns out MAME sucks. So I just gave up. DirectX 9 wouldn't install? Nothing I could do. Maybe I'd contact Daniel and ask him what the hell kind of magic he worked. Maybe Wine regressed. Maybe I'd download the sources for the version he tested on. Or maybe I'd just go and brood about Sega not selling me this game on Steam for a while. Thanks, guys. So, some time passed. Like it does sometimes. And I was trying out other distros because RPCS3 strikes fear into my heart after that Pulse Audio incident. Oh god, the crackling, it won't go away. Tried KDE Neon, kinda sucked. Tried Manjaro KDE, 
didn't install. Tried Ubuntu Mate. Turns out Mate sucks. But while I was there, I tried installing DirectX 9 for Mind Tricks and trying the emulator again. Would you believe me if I said it worked? finally did it. You place eleven. Ah, uh, that was fun. Chroma key. But wait, there's more. And I'm not done yet. The Model Two emulator has a networking feature. That means. Oh, that means. <laughs> That's right, I built a fully functional, Linux-powered Daytona USA twin arcade cabinet. You know, without steering wheels. I swear, you could buy an actual car for the price of two racing wheels, and I have no idea if the force feedback would work anyway. Regardless, it works almost perfectly. It only took about 30 minutes to write the scripts and set up the whole thing. It's kind of insane. <laughs> this is my Daytona cabinet. It's uh, a little barren. It's just a hard drive kind of dangling out here in the open and these cables all over the place, but uh, I mean, it works. Let's turn it on. Man, maybe I shouldn't have picked up that hard drive. There we go. Now, right now, I've um, got it set to a terminal command because, as far as I know, there is uh, no way to make the emulator start automatically. But uh, I've got M2MU, that script, M2MU, which starts up the first emulator on the left side. 2MU2, move this to the right, and then boom, we've got two emulators. This is a nice shutter speed we've got here. This could be loud.
Victory Lake. You made it. That about wraps things up. I plan to continue iterating on my arcade cabinet as time goes on, and maybe I'll make an update video at some point. If you suffer from that same wine tricks bug installing DirectX 9, I've included a mostly blank wine prefix with DirectX 9 already installed in it. Use it as you wish. Thanks for watching, everyone. Stay tuned for more Linux bits. And remember, try to go easy on the car! But what about Daytona 2? What?